Nothing lasts forever. I'm sure all of you have heard that phrase, right? And it applies to many different things. Nothing lasts forever. Cars don't last forever. You eventually have to get a new one. Clothing doesn't last forever. It eventually wears out. You have to get new clothing. Even food, even those dehydrated meals you'll take backpacking, they expire in 2045. They don't last forever. Buildings don't last forever. You can go to Greece and see the Pantheon, which was built about 2,000 years ago, but it's all eroding and crumbling. Even mountains don't last forever. They're slowly wearing away. Nothing lasts forever. That's often a phrase that we speak with sadness because it affects what's near and dear to us. Good health doesn't last forever. Our loved ones don't last forever. Did you notice a common thread running through all the things that don't last forever? They all have something to do with things of this world and with human beings. Things of this world, human beings, don't last forever. And that's exactly the point that's being made in verse 23 of our sermon text. There were many who became priests because death prevented any of them from continuing to remain in office. The writer to the Hebrews was talking about all the priests, high priests in the Old Testament. From the time of the first high priest, Aaron, the time of Moses, all the way until the time of the last high priest in 70 AD, when the Romans destroyed the temple, there were 78 high priests. They didn't last forever. Why? Because death prevented any of them from continuing to remain in office. And isn't that the one big problem in the world? Isn't that why your beloved parents or your beloved spouse or your beloved child isn't here anymore? Isn't that why we grow old and our body can't do the things it used to be able to do and we have to become dependent on others because our bodies are dying. They die. And why do they die? Because the wages of sin is death. You know, often we're tempted to get angry at God when we lose our good health or we lose a loved one. But God isn't the Debbie Downer of life, is he? Death is. Sin is. The sin that Satan brought into the world and the death that comes with it makes nothing here last forever. So where then can I find happiness and joy if nothing here lasts forever? Where can I find peace and purpose if nothing here lasts forever? Where can I find confidence and contentment in life if nothing lasts forever? You know, if you want to find the diamonds, you can't just look at any soil. You have to look at the right soil. They're only found in certain types of rocks, and generally they're found where craters push those rocks up from deep down in the earth. It's the same with finding joy and peace and purpose and contentment in life. You have to find that by looking for it in the right place. Not among the things that don't last forever. But it's found among the one who does last forever. Jesus, your great high priest, lives and lasts forever. Listen again to some of the verses of our sermon text. It began by saying, There were many who became priests because death prevented any of them from continuing to remain in office. But because this one endures forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Unlike 
the other high priest, he does not need to offer sacrifices on a daily basis, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. In fact, he sacrificed for sins once for all when he offered up himself. Did you catch the big oxymoron in those verses? An oxymoron is two opposite statements that can't really or shouldn't be able to both be true. The great oxymoron of that statement is this. Jesus offered himself up as a sacrifice, yet Jesus lives forever. By its nature, a sacrifice is giving up of your life. Yet it says Jesus is the only sacrifice in the world that lives on after it was sacrificed. Why? Because Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. Why? Because he's God. Because when he sacrificed on the cross, he wasn't making a sacrifice for his own sins. He didn't have any. Remember how all those Old Testament priests, before they could ever offer a sacrifice for the people, they had to take a bull and sacrifice it for themselves. Why? Because they were sinful. They had to sacrifice for their sins. But Jesus accomplished what no other Old Testament high priest could do. He was God. Therefore, he's just the kind of high priest you and I need who was holy, innocent, pure, and separated from sinners. And isn't that just the kind of sacrifice we need? Jesus is holy and innocent. Can you imagine that? Not having a speck of sin on yourself, not having the germ of your sinful nature that just spurts out into sins time and again. Jesus is pure. Can you imagine that? Not ever in your life have even the slightest deviation away from any of God's commandments. I can't imagine that. I look at my life and my sinful nature can easily burst out into any kind of sin at any moment. And you, like me, we don't just sometimes slightly deviate away from God's commandments. Sometimes we run far away from them. But do you know what's worse than just our sin in and of itself? It's what our sin does to our relationship with God. Isn't that the point why God connected physical death to sin? Because he wanted us, he wanted to get our attention. He wanted us to take sin seriously. He wanted us to see that sin separates us from God. Your and my greatest problem isn't in the world isn't your good health failing. Your and my biggest problem in the world isn't the loss of a loved one. Your and my biggest problem in the world isn't even your own physical death. Our biggest problem is that our soul, the one part of us that lasts forever, would be separated from God forever. But here, we're told Jesus, our high priest, became your perfect and complete sacrifice for all your sins. Do you get the logic here? If Jesus lives forever... And Jesus sacrificed himself for your sins, then Jesus' sacrifice counts for your sins forever. Because Jesus lives forever, you don't have to worry about being separated from God forever. Because Jesus lives forever, you don't have to worry about not seeing your loved one who died in the Lord. Because Jesus lives forever, you don't have to worry about those sins of your past. They're covered under forever. Because Jesus lives forever, you don't have to worry about that day when you're going to meet your maker because he'll be alive. He lives forever there to make sure his sacrifice counts for all your sins. The writer to the Hebrews said, so because of this, for this reason, he's able to save forever those who come to God through him because he always lives to plead on their behalf. That word plead, in the original Greek, you know what it meant? Any of you ever play darts? 
It meant to hit the bullseye. That's what that word plead means. Isn't there great comfort in knowing that Jesus goes to the Father on your behalf to plead for you, to hit the bullseye for you? Let me give you an example just from your everyday Christian life. Each of you, we're all the same. Each day, as God's child, God now sends you out in the world to live for his glory, to take all the blessings he's given you in life and spread them to others. And so each and every day we get up with the good intention of living our lives for God. We want to keep his commandments. We want to keep his name and his word holy in our lives. But by the time the day's ended, or by the time it almost gets to the end, we're hanging our heads a little bit lower, our hearts are a little more heavy, because we haven't lived up to the standard that we've wanted to live up to in the day. And certainly we've not lived up to the standard that God wants us to live to. So we hang our heads at night as we say our prayers, and with the stain, the blood of our sin staining us, all we can really say to Jesus is, I'm sorry. And you know what Jesus says in reply? Don't worry, let me go talk to my Father for you. And so Jesus goes up to the throne of his Father, and he stands before his Father, and he begins with the very first sin you committed that day, and he announces and goes through every last sin you've committed until he gets to the very last sin of the day for you. He's listed every sin of the day, and he says to his father, Father, I have committed each and every one of these sins. And then Jesus leaves the throne room, and he goes back to you, and he takes your trembling hands in his hands, and he shows you the nail marks in his wrists, and he looks at you with that same sympathetic, compassionate face that he looked at you with yesterday and the day before, and he says, I've talked to my father, and my father says he has forgiven you all your sins. I love you, my child, and I will always love you. Now go in the peace of this forgiveness. Because Jesus lives forever, he's always pleading for you with his Father and forgiving your sins. But he doesn't just plead for the forgiveness of our sins each day. There's more. Doesn't Jesus know everything? Jesus knows what makes you happy, and he knows what makes you sad. He knows your wishes as well as your worries. He knows how old you are. He knows whether you're in school, whether you're working, whether you're retired. He knows the pet sins you struggle with. He knows the dreams and plans and hopes you have. He knows all of those things. He knows all your cares and concerns. And he goes to his father and pleads for them. He hits the bullseye with his father with those things. He takes those concerns, cares, and needs you have, the ones that most affect you, and he hits the bullseye with his father, and he pleads with his father for you with them. Isn't that what he did with Peter, remember? When Satan was sorely tempting Peter, he said, Peter, I've prayed for you. Doesn't he do that for you and me? And in John 17, the whole chapter is called Jesus' high priestly prayer. Doesn't he there plead and pray with his father in heaven to not let a single believer lose their faith? Doesn't he do that for you? And for me, because our high priest lives forever, he always is pleading for us. Nothing lasts forever. Not cars, not clothes, not food, not buildings, not good health, not even our loved ones and our own life. But Jesus does last forever. Our great high priest lives forever. Therefore, his sacrifice for your sin counts forever. And he's always pleading to his Father just for you. Doesn't that make you want to keep Jesus as close to you in your life as you can? Do that. Make sure you're reading your meditation and your devotion booklet in your Bible because there you're going to be reminded each day, oh, my priest lives forever, and his sacrifice lasts forever. Make a prayer log. Write down your prayers and your needs and your concerns, and take them to your Father. 
because Jesus then is going to hit the bullseye on those and take the very ones you need to your Father for you as well. Amen.